part two. Sequels are always better. Always. I'm going to give you the steps first, then we're going to use those steps to do those our problems today. See, in this section, I'm going to be giving you fractions that do not have a common denominator already. We're going to have to find that, which we've practiced doing, use that to make an equivalent rational expression, which we just did, and then we'll be able to add or subtract them, provided we use the parentheses appropriately like we've been practicing that also. But, but the first thing you're going to have to do if you don't have a common denominator, you're going to have to find your LCD. Find the LCD. That, that's incorporating all the fractions. Find the LCD and write it down. The next step is probably the most important step. All right. The next step is you're going to use that LCD to rewrite each fraction as an equivalent rational expression, what we just did. So that way you're going to have that common denominator. So find the LCD, then rewrite each rational expression as an equivalent rational expression using the LCD. I'll make that a little bit more concise. Rewrite each fraction as an equivalent rational expression. That's what we did right here. And we're going to do that by using the LCD. And I'll show you how to do that in a second. The next step we're going to do is we're going to add or subtract, because we'll be at that point. We'll have a, LC, we'll have a common denominator after, after step number two. So add or subtract. One thing I want to make a note on the paper, on, the, on your paper here real quick. Uh, don't distribute your denominators. You never do that. Uh, at least in here, you don't do that. Because you're going to try to simplify later, right? Which means you're going to factor. The numerators, yes, we will be distributing those, because you need to combine like terms. But on the denominators, you're not going to distribute denominators. You're going to wait till the very end and try to factor and simplify anyway. So don't distribute denominators. And the last step we're going to do, this is the step pretty much every time we have a rational expression, you're going to try to simplify. So are you ready to put this all together and see how to do this stuff? Are you ready? Is everything we learned so far? Together? Okay. We're going to start kind of, kind of slow. We're not going to do things that look like this yet. All right? We'll get there today. Maybe. But to get the foundation laid here, Let's start off with something along, along these lines. <clears throat> first thing, I want you to check to see if it has a common denominator first, because that can save you time, right? You don't want to waste your time doing all the stuff if it already has a common denominator. Do these have a common denominator? No. Yeah. Common denominator? No, no, no. No, no, one's 5, one's 15, so those are different. So that says you do the first step, which is, Find your LCD. Take five seconds right now, find your LCD and write it down, okay? Should be very quick. LCD in our case is? Very good. Here's how we use that 15. That 15 is very much like having this part right here. So the, the 15 is taking the place of the lower part of your second fraction on equivalent rational expressions. Basically what you're trying to do is make each denominator the same thing as 15. Now, if it's already 15, that's great. You don't have to do anything. If it's not 15, you ask yourself, what do I need to multiply by in order to get to 15? So what we're going to show over here is multiplication on each side. 
Now, we're going to start on the right-hand side. I need an LCD of 15. I already have 15. Do I need to multiply this one by anything? You're already set. Okay, that's great. That already has the 15. So I don't need to multiply there. On the left-hand side, the question is, what do you need to multiply by in order to get 15? What you want is 15 on the bottom of each, on the denominator of each of your fractions, in this case, because that is your LCD, your lowest common denominator. What do you need to multiply by here? Three. Three. Okay. Now, just like over here, this is this part, look. Just like over here, what you're doing, after you figure out what you need to multiply by, not only do you multiply the denominator, you also have to multiply the numerator. Are you clear on that part? Yes. Why is that the case? Keep it equal. Explain that. So they're the same? Keep it equal so they're the same. Okay, good. If I multiplied by 3 here and something different than 3 up there, would the fraction stay the same value? No. 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 So basically I'm multiplying by 1. Uh, something over itself is 1. And that doesn't change the value of anything. That's fine. That's what we want. Remember, our idea is that we are purposely unsimplifying fractions to make them the same denominator. That's what we're doing. Purposely unsimplifying. So here we multiply by 3 because that's going to give us 15. We have to multiply by 3 up there to keep our fraction the same value. Can you tell me what this fraction will become? Minus, oh, we have 3y over 15. Very good. Did we do it right? Mm -hmm. You can check because you should have the same number three spots. Your LCD you wrote down, so you should have the, the denominator there, and these two should be exactly the same as that one. If it is, you've done the right step. Okay? You've got that right. What's our next step? Subtract. Okay, so we're going to add or subtract, and we've already done that. This goes back to, uh, let's see, last section or something? Uh, so that we, we have this idea down already. We just make one fraction out of this. Our denominator stays the same. We learned this already. And then we're going to do that subtraction just like uh, combine like terms. So 3y minus 3y gives us how much? Yeah. Is it okay to get zero on the top of our fraction? Mm -hmm. Is it okay to get zero on the bottom of our fraction? No. One of them's okay. Top Which, the, top okay. the top is okay. How much is zero over 15? It's zero. Yeah, this one is zero. That's okay. <clears throat> so don't leave it at zero over 15. The answer is zero. I wanted to show that one to you again so that way it kind of sticks in your head a little bit. So some questions on that last time. Are you ready to move on and try something a little bit, a little bit different than just 15? <laughs> There we go. That's a good one for us to try. So first thing we're going to do, we're going to do this one together. I'll model how to do it. First thing you do, you check for common denominators. Now, of course, I don't have any in this case, so I'm going to try to find my LCD. Now, we have spent a whole lot of time finding LCD, which is, that's why we spent the time, so we'd be good at this stuff. LCD, the first thing you do again, I'm going to look for my numbers. I'm going to look at 8 and 10 and find the LCD of just those numbers. So I take my 10, it goes 8 going to 10, no, 20, no, 30, no, 40, yeah. So 40 is going to be my coefficient of my LCD. The next thing that I look for is any variables, the different factors. Remember working with different factors? You probably did it on your homework if you started your homework. You probably were able to get this far and go, oh yeah, I know how to do this. We look at our different factors. In this case, the only factor we have is x. So we're going to take the largest power of x that we see. There's x here and x squared there. Which one am I going to write up there? x squared. Not x cubed. That's too big. We don't want to deal with that. Look, if you wrote x cubed, you're going to have to do work on this fraction that you wouldn't otherwise have to do. That's going to make things a whole lot bigger and make your simplification a whole lot worse. Are you with me on that? Are you sure? You don't want to make your fraction bigger, do you? Not if you don't have to. No. We're going to make things as simple as possible, not as worse as possible. That would suck. So the 10 and the 8 give us 40 as an LCD. The x and the x squared, we take the largest power of each different factor that we see. There's only one different factor. There's only x. So we take the largest power of x, and that right there is our LCD. Are you good with that? Yeah, that's what we covered last time. So the question now is, how do I get from these denominators to my LCD, and that's where the multiplication takes place. So 
So on each fraction, we're going to have to multiply by something. Let's work on the right fraction first. Let's look up there. I need to get from 10x squared to x squared. What do I need to multiply by, ladies and gentlemen? So that's here, and that's there. 4 over 4, because that makes a fancy 1. On the left-hand side, I have 8x. I need 40x squared. So to get from 8x to 40x squared, I'm going to ask first, the numbers, what number do I need to multiply by? 5, because that takes me from the 8 to the 40. That's the, I need to multiply, multiply by 5. How am I going to get from x to x squared, though? Let's see if this works. Let's do the math in our head, okay? What's 10x squared times 4? 40. What's 8x times 5x? Hey, that's what we want, right? That's where those numbers are coming from. You're asking yourself, how do I complete this problem? How do I make this into this by multiplication? That's what you're asking. How do I change this denominator into my LCD by multiplying things? And we do that to both the top, our numerator, and bottom denominator. I don't know if you're okay with this so far. Yeah, okay. Let's figure out what this fraction is going to be now. Because remember, we're purposely unsimplifying. So I'm taking the 5x times the 5. We've multiplied fractions before. That's great. I certainly don't want to start simplifying things, do I? Because I'm purposely unsimplifying. I don't want to do that. I don't want to start crossing stuff out. So don't waste your time, because that would be a complete waste of time, right? If you did this work, and you did this, and you crossed everything out, because you're going to get this right back again. So we don't, we don't want to do that. So we're purposely making these bigger temporarily so we can add them together. This is going to give me 25x. On the denominator, I get 40 and I get x squared. That's what I wanted. I have the plus sign still. On the second fraction, I get 44 over 40x squared. And we're going to see that I did the problem right. We have the LCD up here. We have it in both spots down on our fractions. So now we're able to add these things together because we have a common denominator. The next step would be okay. Since we have the common denominator, we're going to make one fraction out of it, write that LCD again, put our two fractions numerators on the second numerator here, on our new numerator. And the last thing we try to do is to simplify. Simplify means you're going to try to factor and cross stuff out. That's the fun part. Can I factor that? No. Then I'm done. As far as you need to go. Raise your hand if you're okay with this problem. Before we go any further, I'm going to give you about a minute to try one of these on your own, okay? It's simple. It's real similar, but I just want to make sure you can do it.